Avacodas. So recently I took the part in the closed beta for the new IDE called the Data Spell from JetBrains. So this IDE is made for data scientists and in particular it is focused on a variety of mechanics that the typical data scientist can encounter on a bright and sunny day. So today I want to present you an overview or the first impression of this ID and I will be clicking on the variety of buttons, checking the mechanics, glitches and so on. So I would recommend you to watch this video on the uh, high resolution screen because it might not be um, as obvious on mobiles when I'll be testing the menus. And I should also mention that to test it, I'll be using the guide on the JetBrains official website. And I'll try to follow in its footsteps. So first of all, uh, we'll check the menus. So file, everything is uh, pretty much as in uh, the PyCharm or IntelliJ, if you are familiar with those IDs. And here I'm clicking new and some window appears floating in this abyss. I don't really know what is it for, so if you know, please leave your comment in the description. But I'll try to start a project um, the usual way, um, new workspace directory. So here we need to specify the location and give it a name. So I'll use something like um, test, um, just append the placeholder they offered. And so now we have a workspace set up. Let's check the edit and code. Uh, we don't have any code just yet, so um, a lot of them are um, gray and not um, you can't choose them. So you can see the format, probably format the code, then is a cell. Um, so presumably something like a Jupyter notebook. And then we have a run where we can run the cell or run the program and debug it. And then we have kernel and environment and some tools and so on and so forth. I would assume we would need to set up the environment because I've skipped that uh, step when I've started this um, data spell IDE. Uh, but first I want to import the CSV file with data uh, they uh, provided on their official website. So here it is, .csv. So, and I'll try to read it and display its content. In particular, I'll be curious to um, see how this IDE incorporates uh, some of the elements of uh, well-known um, Jupyter notebooks and say Google Collapse. Because, of course, if Jupyter Notebook is already uh, mentioned in uh, this IDE, then probably they won't create something from scratch. As you can see, I'm just trying to um, set up the interpreter. So they won't do something uh, from scratch because uh, there are plenty of tools on the market. And, um, of course, Jupyter and Collab, they are pretty much twins. So in character another error and we we'll probably need to set up the environment later on. I don't want to uh, set up the environment right now because I want to check whether um, this IDE will have some, I don't know, AI support. Um, maybe there will be uh, like an advisor that will do stuff for us. So here I'm right clicking, and I'm choosing new and here you can see that um, not only Python but R is supported and I'm clicking a new Jupyter Notebook. I'm calling it um, example. And I should say, uh, this is a cold start, but I will not be cutting uh, in some places deliberately just to um, show you how long does it take to perform a certain operation. So here we can see um, a new line, a new cell that resembles pretty much what, uh, what is in um, the Jupyter Notebook. So here I'm checking the code, um, nothing appeared just yet. So here we can change the code to markdown or um, something else. And more or less, I can start typing um, code from the um, usual um, sort of Jupyter setup. So import pandas spd. So I have pandas installed um, globally on my machine, but 
I haven't installed it explicitly for this IDE, but apparently it can pick it up. And I'm using pandas to import uh, that CSV table. And here I'm using the read CSV method and I'm passing the uh, name of uh, the table. So pretty much um, that is going to be it. And here I'm typing kernel starts again just to uh, see uh, the display of that table. And I'm launching run and I encounter the error. So I'll need to set up the environment. So there is no um, AI support, um, probably in this question, uh, which we should do manually. Probably there will be some AI support later on, but let's see. This is the art Python interpreter menu. So here we can set up new environments or we can use the existing environment. Um, so I'm going to use the existing environment and here the wheel is turning. So it um, is probably searching for an interpreter. Nothing appeared just yet. As I've said, this is a cold start. It probably things um, taking longer. But in the end, I should probably see here my uh, my Conda uh, Python and I'll uh, choose it. So now I can update my Python interpreter and hopefully run that cell. So I'm launching a run and let's see how long does it take to um, display the table. So I'm pressing this green button and I can see that uh, there is no asterisk on the left, like in Jupyter Notebook, um, which shows that um, a certain cell is uh, being executed and we're waiting for the response. So I can see the animation underneath the, um, the cell. We see some, um, some I don't know, uh, some waves or something like that. Uh, but meantime, I can start uh, typing um, or you can see here, it's like a call up. You can um, continue with the code or continue with the markdown. So in here, I'm importing the matplotlib pyplot as plt. And essentially what I want to do is to display um, some of the columns of this data set um, as the pie chart. So I'm typing plt.py and I'm passing here kernel stats. Um, I've just experienced a weird glitch where it has thrown me out um, from the uh, brackets. Okay, the square brackets and then the apostrophe. Um, apostrophe uh, being displayed not in a pair like in say Google Colab where you press um, or standard, I don't know, PyCharm when you press apostrophe once and you got two apostrophes because the IDE thinks you're going to be writing something inside. But here, um, maybe this is like a single glitch, I don't know. Um, choosing the total um, count and labels, I'm going to choose kernel stats. Square brackets again and I have to move in and I'm typing a library. And here is a weird glitch again when I'm trying to uh, put another apostrophe to close that um, the first apostrophe, it just um, moves me to the next um, line um, as in, I don't know, function. So this is a weird glitch, definitely. So I have to manually come back and close that um, label. So plt.show and Let's have a look whether um, it will wait for the first one to finish and then it will execute the second cell or it can do things like simultaneously. Um, meantime, I'll check the um, auto completion. So tab, uh, nothing happening, uh, nothing works. Um, SH uh, tab just throws you to the next line. Okay. Finally, we've got our chart. This is a pretty um, nicely looking uh, table. Um, probably this is like uh, because I'm in a dark color, um, but it's well formed. Um, you can read it quite easily. And I'm coming back to the second cell with uh, matplotlib. Uh, looks like the auto completion doesn't work and I have to do it manually. 
um, but let's remove it and see whether it can run it without the explicitly um, stating plt.show. So I'm going to start the new cell and I'm going to put the plt.show here. And as you can see, um, animation of the uh, matplotlib cell um, underneath. So I'll try to read what uh, the output is. Um, we have a bunch of uh, I don't know pointers, some text, and in the end, uh, down at the bottom, we have the pie chart. I didn't do any scaling explicitly. I just wanted to test whether you know it will output something nice. Um, from out of the box because like I said a lot of IDs incorporate um, bits of machine learning that can sort of define stuff for you uh, when not explicitly defined but apparently data spell is, um, is not the case so plt.show um, on the next cell it's not being picked up so it doesn't work that means I have to move this plt.show to the uh, cell where you know I I put the comment to uh, plot where I state uh, the the chart, the pie chart, which is kind of bizarre because um, I'm pretty sure Jupyter can um, and Colab, um, Google Colab can do that. So as you can see, the pie chart itself is um, pretty much crowded. It's not been you know stretched to um, for the ease of uh, display what's in the pie chart. It's rather like a standard. Um, standard pre-AI stuff and here I just briefly check the terminals um, yeah we have the main um, standard terminal um, I can see that we have Jupyter so a terminal is still loading um, we have R as well and uh, Jupyter we have some red letters that we don't like but I wasn't uh, setting it up as far as I heard you can um, connect to the um, remote Jupyter server but I think that was uh, pretty much um, a lot of demonstration for um, like a first, oh my God. So, all right, um, I have to allow the, um, the firewall, um, I have to present uh, this uh, data spell to my firewall, um, but that's fine. So uh, that was a brief overview, uh, first impression. I really hope that um, guys will um, have a look and correct some glitches it is still a beta so um, I still expect some mechanics um, will be unraveled later on but I could say this is a pretty um, nice looking standard um, JetBrains software and I'm not aware what is going to be under the pro license um, so what is going to be community and pro license difference but um, here it is. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, that was V. Please give this video Emperor's thumbs up, toll the bell and subscribe. So see you in the next video.